Racist. Okay, we're live. I can no longer hear you, Frugal. Can you hear me? Pam, can you hear Frugal or myself? Hello, can you hear me? Guess not. So we have two people watching. It says we're live. says we're live. Let me turn down that volume. So I can hear myself. Hi, Adelaide. Can we hear Frugal? Thank you. Hi, Square Table De Degenerates Podcast. Dwight, welcome. Nissy, nice to see you there. Hi, Adventures with Eminem. That's right. Frugal, if you can see this, you do have to talk. Oh, just one moment. I've got a technical question. Um, Mama Sassy over here. What do you need? I want to make sure you don't have any background noise. Oh, you're coming in? Oh, my sister is here. <laughs> All right, so we'll go to live chat there. Say hello to Mama Sassy. Oh, you won't be able to hear us in there. No, uh, you can only hear us. Hey, Mama Sassy, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, sorry about that. Fine. All right, so um, what are you doing today, Frugal? Let's see. All right, um, Adelaide, I'm sorry. Hey, Adelaide. I do see a little bit of delay here on mine. Yeah, mine evidently has got a delay to it, too. Um, I guess I need to extend that coat hanger I got hung out on it. Well, I'm hooked up to the landline. I mean, hooked up to a land cable. So hopefully yeah. that's not... I was trying to minimize that instead of trying to go over Wi-Fi.
So how is everybody liking their winter so far while we're waiting on frugal? Everybody staying warm? I, I'm getting double sound from you, Sandy. You're getting what? Double sound. You're getting sound? Double sound. Echo. I'm getting double sound from you. Whenever you say something, it says it. Are you getting double sound from me? I think he might be on two mics. Are you on two mics? No, my my um no. my computer is muted. I, I've just got my phone. Okay. Just talk louder then. Right, Eric, you, you may have two windows open that's uh, capturing your voice. Okay. Okay. All right, well, we lost him. So under, underground cables uh, for the internet in Australia. Hi, happy wife. Well, it's really, really is Arctic here. We're in West Virginia right now. So it's uh, been very cold this winter. Not so much like if we were you know, around the Great Lakes states, uh, but, or Canada. <laughs> but I've lived in Florida and Georgia for a really long time. So this is the first winter that I've been here mostly full time. And uh, it's, it's cold. I don't really want to go outside to do anything, but I have to um, go feed the chickens and clean them up. Keep them healthy. Adelaide, we could take some of your warmth up here. That would be great. So who all is uh, gardening right now? Anybody um, already gotten started on your gardening for this year? Not even thinking about it? Or you think it's just mainly too cold to do anything? Well, I've gotten into that uh, later. It's too cold to even do anything. However, I have been sorting out with my father. <laughs> You're right, happy wife. It is, it is too cold right now. But I've been trying to decide on what we were going to grow in our garden this year and talking to my dad and trying to sort out what we want to do. Now, he and I have a little bit different ideas about what we want to grow. Uh, so we've got this little, uh, let me pull this down a little bit and over. Yeah. So that's kind of like my garden layout here. Instead of eight rows, I'm going to go down to six rows in the garden. And it's probably about a 30 by 60 plot. And 
we're listing uh, all the uh, varieties of things that we want to grow. And of course, I don't need any more seeds. Oh, Bruce, you've got um, green onions going. Wonderful. Apple trees. What kind of apple trees do you have? I got this thing. <laughs> the whole seed catalog from um, this is rareseeds.com. And this is the Bible. <laughs> I love looking at it. I don't need any more seeds, but I love reading it. So I don't know if you can see this. This great table book. And get some ideas on future things that I would like to grow. Oh, okay. Now, um, happy wife, uh, squirrels ate your garlic and green onions and parsley. They were kind of hungry this winter, huh? So the squirrels have just been eating the black walnuts out here on the trees. I'm sure that, um, now don't tell on me, please. <laughs> I, I'm sure if I had other things growing out there, the squirrels would probably be digging them up. Uh, but right now, I mean, we've had a freeze today, got to about 43 degrees here in West Virginia. So as Mama Sassy says, I did buy some seeds. I got some Parisian carrots today. Those were, I got two packs. Well, Bruce, even if they are the crab apples, you can still make plenty of good things with them. Uh, my grandmother had crab apple trees here, and she made pies with them, jam, um, apple butter, all those things with the crab apples. They are smaller and hard to work with um, because they're smaller, but they are they they work for her. Right. Uh, happy wife, what were the carrots? Um, was it loose soil in the deep pots? Yes, Dwight, seeds can go bad. Uh, you want to try to keep them, you know, in the humidity free area zone or actually put them in the freezer and store them there. That'll, um, that will uh, extend their life. I have some seeds that my father just showed me uh, that we haven't gone through. He brought them to me yesterday. Uh, they're wrapped in some cellophane and everything that my grandfather had. So I'm gonna try. No, my grandfather's been gone about um, 30, 32, 33 years now. So I'm going to, I am going to try some of those seeds to see if there are any of them are viable. Can you hear me, Sandy? I can hear you fine. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't, I had to go do a whole bunch of different stuff that I don't know how to do. So. Right. Um, happy wife may, um, sometimes miracles. Miracle grow soil in the soils that you get, or you might want to add some perlite to them or some peat to um, make them fluffier. So if it's miracle grow soil, if it's garden soil or potting soil, there there is a difference. And if I've got a bag that was marked uh, potting soil, but it didn't have any perlite in it. So I had to add perlite that one year. If you're starting a garden area, what's the first thing you do to 
get that soil started that, you know, just the uh, first time gardener would be able to do. Well, you want to test your soil to see if it needs amendment, um, fertilizers and stuff. And this depends on the type of soil you have, because in Florida and Georgia, I have sand. Up here in West Virginia, I have clay. So in Florida and Georgia, I'm trying to add nutrients, keep adding nutrients in there to make it um, a more viable soil. And up here, I'm trying to make it less clay. <laughs> so um, adding um, perlite and vermiculite will do that for Happy Mama. Now, are you able to get hold of a lot of compost up in uh, West Virginia? Hey, everybody, thanks for coming. Uh, sorry, I was having technical difficulties. Um, compost up here, I do have a compost pile, but I do not have a, um, I do not have a source for anything other than ch chicken manure because I have chickens and I've got that compost uh, but I don't have the, what I use in Georgia is horse manure and add, amend that in my garden about, um, about eight weeks before I'm ready to start planting. Did you run into any problems with the horse manure bringing in any type nut grass or anything like that? Yes, it, it brings in seeds, um, definitely, uh, but you just get a hoe and keep it weeded or use um, row covers. Um, there's this guy in England, I see. He does a lot of uh, cardboard. He lays down cardboard and uh, tarps mm -hmm. when he's bringing in new areas. Have you tried anything like that? I have. Um, on the garden in Pooler, Georgia, I've, I've covered it over for the winter. And uh, so it wouldn't recede with the temperature fluctuations. Uh, uh, but I usually use black plastic if I'm doing that. And I didn't do it this past year. So I am, I've got tons of weeds growing in it. Yeah. Um, if, if somebody's just starting out, what would you recommend they plant that first year just to get their hands dirty, so to speak? I would just, um, well, that depends. I wouldn't grow anything that you wouldn't eat. So only grow what you're going to eat or what you're going to cut, like cut flowers and stuff to put into your uh, vases and everything. But really good starter things is some um, black eyed peas are really good and easy to grow. I would kind of stay away from lettuces. Uh, lettuces, um, it's temperamental because if it's too hot, it's going to bolt on you. Yes. Yes, Bruce, beans are a great starter. Um, and pepper plants. You can't go wrong with pepper plants if you like peppers. And yeah, bell pepper and hot pepper. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Um, those were those what I would start out with. Um, sweet potatoes or potatoes. Uh, uh, Nissy, I. Nissy's question. Okay. Yeah, Nissy, I have uh, here in West Virginia. We have probably a twelve foot section of fencing. And I have, because we have lots of deer here and it is all chicken wire around the, um, around the garden. And uh, do you have rabbit. problems with rat rabbits there too? Well, we had a problem with the rabbit and you ought to see my dad run around trying to chase it. I think the rabbit was about ready to have a heart attack trying to get away from my dad and that find his way out. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> uh. Um, with uh, squirrels, uh, I haven't really seen any um, any squirrels um, inside the garden. We had some 
birds and things and I put up bird netting. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you might need some type bird netting there, happy wife, and uh, m maybe to augment your soil there. But I've, I've got some uh, rabbit manure and uh, some pretty clean chicken manure I'm going to get to you so you can kind of, you don't need to use a lot of that chicken manure and be very, very sparing with that because it's got a high nitrogen content. So Right. Oh, I must have missed him in the backyard, Mama Sassy. Happy Wife says, my cucumbers were very, very pale and watermelon didn't grow last year. Uh, we did have a drought last year, but we did water twice daily. Um, I did grow Brussels sprouts, but the squirrels ate them. Well, I still have Brussels sprouts in the garden. Uh, they're growing and I have kale still out there. And the freeze kind of gets them, but they keep coming back. Um, wow. Well, the cucumbers are very pale. Uh, wonder if that was, a, you water twice a day. Um, you only need about an inch a week. Inch, I wouldn't go over an inch a week on watering. <laughs> well, that's good. Maybe you had some squirrel, uh, squirrel stewed. <laughs> Frugal likes good squirrel, so you might make him some squirrel one day, happy wife. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I like squirrel. Oh, Mama Sassy does remind me that, yes, I have some sage still growing out there and a little bit of parsley. <clears throat> now, excuse me, on a winter garden, what would you suggest for the beginning gardener? On I like winter? cabbage. Yeah, I like cabbage. And, I think cabbage and collards are easy to grow. Of course, collards is kind of an acquired taste. It's in the Kale family, for those y'all don't know. Right. I was going to say kale. Um, kale's pretty hardy. And, um, but it, turnips, turnips are good. Carrots are good uh, for winter. Go ahead and um, maybe start your peas. Go ahead and get them in the ground, depending on where you're at. Uh, peas uh, are cool season crop. Uh, by the time spring comes and spring for me has always been two days. So you went from winter to spring and then all of a sudden it's hot as summer and then nothing ever grows on those cool season crops. Um, <laughs> so That's right, Mama Sassy. <laughs> I do have um, herbs growing in my window right now. I've got chamomile and uh, lavender. I've started those seeds. Um, Bruce, uh, here I have slugs, and slugs have really attacked the um, uh, my um, my goodness cabbage. <laughs> So uh, we we had a lot of slugs in the cabbage last year, and um, hopefully this year I'll get a better control of them. Um, haven't really overcome them yet, but I tell you, this garden this past year was awesome. I have so much footage that I have not yet put together. I've I'm working full time now. I'm working overtime, so it's very hard to put out videos, but I did take a bunch of videos, but I just haven't edited them to put them out. But I kid you not, my cucumbers were about two and a half to, yeah, 18 to two feet long. Wow. And do you have the English cucumbers? I do. I don't have, I mean, yes, I do. I'll have to get them uploaded. But uh, we had so many cucumbers. You'd walk down the row and you harvest everything, then you get them, get them up at the end of the garden and get ready to walk in and lock up the garden. And you look back down and 
there's more cucumbers there. <laughs> cucumbers hide. They've always <laughs> been good for that. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, Bruce, where are you at in uh, southwest uh, or southeast West Virginia? Around Hi, Bet Jerry. Um, welcome. Hi, Boxcar Jerry. We're over in uh, Putnam Canal County area near Charleston. Okay. Charleston, wasn't that where Don Knotts was from? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, he's from West I think Virginia. So. I think he is somewhere around here. Yeah, if I remember correctly, he was. Mm -hmm. uh, Mama Sassy, we all like collards. And we had yeah. tons of collards this year, too. Yeah, there's nothing like good collards after a frost. Mm -hmm. If you okay, I, I know you've been gardening because you're kind of my go-to on any gardening questions I've got. If you were starting out, what would you recommend to the beginner? What's what size garden would you uh, start out with? Nothing more than you want to weed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if it's you know just start doing something, um, even if it's just a small little planter, a four by four planter. Um, grow something that you like to eat. Um, it's a waste if you grow something that you're never going to eat. If you don't like salads, don't grow lettuce. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's all on what you want to grow and uh, what you're going to eat. And um, again, start out small and then, you know, work your way up like, okay, well, this year I did this and I want to try this. So I'm going to add another section of my garden and then you can start rotating things out that you like to eat oh yeah mama sassy says order green stock there is green stock has these grow towers and she grows um she grows things in her green stock on her patio in tampa yeah i've got garlic in my green stock right now and i've got a green uh, garlic in um two different pots that I've one was a, a, a cook pot wash pot they had here and the other was one I got from a job for free and I've got a bunch of garlic planted so are you doing your patio uh, your carport garden there too yeah I've got a little bit of garlic in there I've got to weed it out and figure out something better in there those of uh, Carrots that you were talking about that you bought earlier, mm -hmm. that, those I think I'm going to try those over there this year because I, I saw those. Um, yeah, the uh, big blue house homestead did those, and uh, yeah. I just I like those because I, I really you know, for my soul it's not good to have long carrots, and I think I could you know grow grow a couple crops, but I'm getting better organized this year because the way things are going, and that's that's the whole point of this live stream, and I appreciate you coming in was to kind of get people where they, you know, could just grow stuff because just the cost of food is just crazy now. Yes. And um, it, it sure is. And we've actually ate a lot out of the garden this year. We had so much that I was giving it away. Um, neighbors, cucumbers, tomatoes, uh, corn. We were, we were just giving it away because I filled the freezer up and – I given it to my my aunts, uh, different different families in my family, and we still had extra, so I'm passing them out. Even my dad tried to give it to the uh, mail lady as she um, dropped off some things, and it was funny because she looked at it and they were cute, not really nice cucumbers and tomatoes, and she says, "I don't eat those things." I, and that's true with a lot of people. I, when I was working on that farm and there were some wild of uh, uh, the uh, blackberries growing and I was picking them and eating them. I told the guys, hey, man, you want to try some of these? He said, I don't eat it unless it's come from a grocery store. I said, gosh, I said, you're missing out on just some good tasting stuff. Yeah. Uh, Nissy, um, no, I do not. We have a creek in the back that if I, I have – you know, used five gallon buckets to bring water up, but I have, uh, I run water out of the basement down there. 
we are looking at replacing our gutters here on this house. And I think I've talked my father into letting me put in some rain barrels. He was telling my mama sassy that um, he had a plan for that. So we're, we're good to go on the water catchment systems. If you need some barrels, they have these pickle barrels around here that, you know, all they had was pickles in them mm -hmm. and they're 60 gallon, I believe, but you can put a pipe up top when one barrel fills up, it'll fill up the other one. So you actually, you can fill up, you know, 120 plus gallons of water, really. And uh, I've got mm -hmm. kind of a primitive rain catch system, but I use that to make my soaps with out of rain water. Mm -hmm. So um, as the, the house sets up, let me get into the, there, the house sets up top and my garden is way down here. So as it flows down, it'll give it a nice, um, I wouldn't need a pump or anything like that. I use it to be gravity fed. Yeah, that'd be one well. I wonder how much, how many gallons it would take to uh, water your garden. That's a lot of math that I can't do. <laughs> yeah. Um, so five gallon buckets, I probably get about three gallons in it, pulling it out of the creek. And um, that wasn't very nice. Um, well, I mean, I pulled out a sand and dirt today to flatten out my path going down the hill a little bit uh, but it, it's you know it's a lot of work um, so I'm, I'm excited I thought about doing a uh, pump bringing it up out of the creek and flooding the garden with it like once a week during the drought uh -huh. but um, there's so much dirt flowing down through that creek that it would just be um, I think it would get clogged. So I'm, I'm still thinking on that, trying to build a filter system to, before it gets, you know, filter the water out and then having that pump, pump it out into the garden. You got me thinking on that. On, yeah. On filtration system. Mm -hmm. Either something that floats on top of the creek. Uh-huh. You know, like into in a basket with some floaties holding it up and something to filter it. Kind of like cheesecloth, you know, filter it out, but allow it to pump the water out. Um, yes, uh, Mama Sassy, uh, Grandpa did pull out water out of the creek too. Yes, he had really good tomatoes. <laughs> We would well, just sit outside in the in outside in the field back here and just eat them off the vine. But those people could just grow because it was kind of a necessity, you know. That was, mm -hmm. you know, ninety percent of their grocery. You know, whoever they had agreements with to get different types of meat from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Jerry. Um, the uh, drip irrigation would work. Um, I might uh, relocate. Uh, some of the um, drip irrigation systems that I have for the old nursery in uh, Georgia and bring them up here. A lot of drip tape and PVC I've got. Um, so we could, we could do that. Now I know the, um, some of the landfills, they have compost and stuff that they'll give you. Does a landfill up there where you live have compost? They do, yes. Um, and I did see online that they have it um, available, um, but you have to go and haul it off yourself. And <clears throat> with me working, I'm not off on the days that they're open. So uh -huh. I've been doing uh, 10 to 12 hour days. And so Sundays are my only day off. I did work yesterday too. So it's uh -huh. very, it's been very hard to, to get, um, get to do anything really. Well, we appreciate you coming and letting us, uh, get some of your knowledge on gardening. Cause I just, 
I see everybody going to have to go back to having a garden. You know. Hi, Bandana Grandma. <laughs> hey, Bandana. Yeah. You know, I, so, I, I see people having to go back. Uh, have you ever heard the term postage stamp gardening? It was kind of a thing during World War II. Not postage stamp, but victory gardening. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, I think it's going to have to be where everybody's going to have to have a little spot where they're growing something. Right. And um, I was reading up here that um, something I've always wanted to do was um, help vets learn to garden and everything. So they have with um, gardening helps a lot when you're suffering uh, from kind of like PTSD, depression and stuff, just getting your hands in the soil and working. And yes. um up here, I was very pleased that the um, National Guard um, office up here out of Charleston is actually doing that kind of program. It's called Patriot Gardens LLC. It's through, the, uh, through them. And uh -huh. it's for any uh, vet or veteran or active duty serviceman to come and learn to garden. And uh, so it, I... It was it was very interesting. Well, I, my belief is a garden is just good for you as far as, you know, you brought out the mental health aspect of it. But for just for like your health out there, you know, even if you have to sit down, my nanny used to work in her garden. She'd get out there right when the sun creeped out. She'd have her little bonnet on and she'd have a little chair mm -hmm. and she'd move that chair till it got too hot. She'd come in and maybe snap peas and she'd work till that evening and she could get back out there again. Mm -hmm. And she lived to be in her nineties. Yes. Uh, both my, my grandfather was guarding until the day he, he came upstairs from hauling dirt out of the Creek and uh, up for the corn, uh, his cornfield and uh, laid on the couch, told my grandma he was just going to take a nap and, never woke up again. I mean, he was very healthy and, you know, just worked and worked and worked on his gardening and they ate out of that garden. Um, and, uh, he lived to be ripe old age. So it was, yeah. it was good for him. But Bruce then, brought up a good comment about getting wood chips. Which type uh, of wood chips would you recommend? Um, hardwoods if you have it um, pine has a lot of resin in it I mean you can get a pine um, in South Florida in, I mean in Florida and Georgia pine is, a, is most readily available uh, I wouldn't use the commercial uh, mulch or anything like that that's you know that's dyed or anything um, mostly, um, you can go to a sawmill and get sawdust to amend your soil. Wood chips uh -huh. would, if they're wood chips, it'll help cut down on your weeds. Uh, but make sure they're really thick. Uh, Indeed. How, how thick would you recommend on if you're mulching around your stuff? About four four inches of mulch. Um, that'll keep the weeds down. And keep the moisture in the soil, two to four inches. That you yeah. want, you want it to be thick. What do you think about cardboard in the garden as a mulch factor? If you take all the tape and stuff off of it, uh, cardboard works great. However, you do get a lot of mold. Uh, it's too okay. much moisture. Uh, okay. Same with um, I've, I've also used in the past along with cardboard, but um, shredded paper, and that just clumps. Because uh, I know people used to use newspapers, but newspapers have kind of gone by the wayside. I guess somebody still gets them. I don't. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Boxcar Jerry, um, uh, Mary, Carol would, Mary Carol still loves making pies. Um I love her pies now more than she did when we were kids um, because my pies, she, she made me eat them <laughs> so, and they were a mean mud pie. 
she was being mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Mama Sassy is quite the culinary cook now, isn't she? She is. Yes, she's she's Miss Martha Stewart. Uh, I've been trying to get her on camera. The Hurricane Kazette. How thick is the Hurricane Kazette, Mama Sassy? Uh, we used to get it. We used to get a newspaper around here, but I'll uh, um, uh, read now online is usually the obituaries and some of the major headlines. That's about it. Yeah. Yes, Nessie. Uh, where are you at in Florida? Five pages at best. <laughs> That's that's about the size of the newspaper where I'm from, too, Mama mm -hmm. Sassy. Yeah. Another thing with wood mulches, wood wood chips and things, especially with Nissy brought up thing mo keeping moisture in the soil without getting mold here in Florida, it is tricky. Uh, but it also is a ground for um, a nice home for fire ants. So. I, I yeah. try not to use a lot of wood chips. Yeah, I've got my share of fire ants here. Once you think you've gotten the majority of them, there's a big, look like a volcano type mound you got to deal with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have an elderberry plant in a pot down in Georgia that's all full of fire ants that I've got to go take care of. I'm going to pull it out and shake, try to shake as much dirt and ants off of it and uh, repot it without killing it <laughs> so yeah now when did you first start gardening um my dad uh he's always had a garden my grandfather's always had a garden and so up until i got married yeah. and then we didn't have a garden because we moved to orlando and there's just, you know, all the houses are right on top of each other. So we never had a garden. I wasn't too interested at that time until uh, maybe about 20 years ago. Uh -huh. Yeah, I had to lose the dead weight. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 to get back to gardening. <laughs> 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 oh man yeah so um yeah nissy um yeah they are not fun not fun for me yeah the the garden towers at uh they're called green stock and uh we we um mama sassy and i were out in oregon and i wanted so bad i mean it was spring you know in, I got to stop saying, you know, because you don't know. And Mama Sassy's going to get me later for saying it so much. But where it was normally spring, I was itching. We were stuck in Oregon for the pandemic. And I was just itching to get my fingers in the soil. So we bought the garden stock, had it shipped in there. We filled it up and... Uh, started growing and that we had to tend it every night, but uh, we ended up carried the thing back to Florida in a trailer that we were pulling and it, it uh, did pretty well. I'm, I'm right happy with my uh, uh, tower garden and uh, mm -hmm. I've got, like I said, I've got garlic in it now and I, I've got a, I've got enough garlic to last me. I don't know how long, but I love growing it, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, there'll be a use for it. I'll pickle it or something. <laughs> uh, bandana, uh, grandma. Uh, yeah. So what do you do for your slugs besides baiting them with like beer and stuff? I thought about baiting mine or 
Uh, I've actually salted the steps that they were growing, that they were um, crawling around on every night. I get them around here, but not that bad. Normally, I, I'll kind of harvest, but I do not like to touch them. Then I just, I, really, I can't stand it. So <laughs> I'll get a little stick and a little cup or something and put them in there, but the chickens love them. Well, the, um, the chickens don't feed them too much to the chickens because they carry, um, uh, slugs carry little organisms that when they, when the chickens eat them, they attach to the inside of their esophagus uh -huh. uh, or in their in the inside of their throat area and uh, latch on. So then the chickens can choke to death um, with that. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, you've taught me something. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, some are fine what they normally find, but I, I wouldn't feed them a lot of them. Well, happy wife, we can get you hooked up with some garlic. Don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm going to start. Um, I, Mama Sassy and I, we put up a little uh, temporary uh, greenhouse. It's about 7 by 12 foot the other night before the last rain and snow hit. And uh, so I'm going to start things in pots in there to go ahead and get them uh, ready to go in the ground since up here we don't have as long of a season as we do in Florida. Uh, it um, so I want to get things started like sweet potato slips in there because if I wait till May I won't get really good sweet potatoes up here. So I'm going to go ahead and get the sweet potatoes uh, slips already grown and ready to go in the ground as soon as I can work it. Is your uh, greenhouse, is it that rigid plastic or the dome type? It's a dome, uh, what they call, I think it's croissant, the rounded shaped. Uh, like a Quonset hut? Yeah, thank you, that's the word. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now, when you're planting your garden, okay, you're in what uh, planting zone? Up here, it is uh, 6B, where I'm at. Now, do you go through, do you consult with the almanac to kind of back to see when you need to do your seed starts and all that? I do. Is this this year's? I've got one here that I've been, let's see here. Nope, this is the 2021, but I do have the 2022 round. Uh -huh. <laughs> but they're great. I love them. Yeah, yeah, because I, I hadn't been that good a planner with mine, and this year I'm going to do a better plan with my garden, and hopefully that'll give me a better yield and see what I can do on some compa companion crops too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dwight, um, the only way that, you know, to get rid of tomato worms is, you know, to pick them off and squish them. You now they, they do, uh, they do turn into you know, butterflies and moths later on. Uh, so one or the other. So, but tomato worms, if you take a flashlight out at night, they kind of glow in the dark. And so you can pull, pick those off in the evening. Can you feed the tomato worms to the chickens? I'm sure that they would love them. Yeah. Hold on a second. What? I've got one right here. <laughs> Mama Sassy's wanting to know where the almanac was. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently she's listening and not watching. <laughs> oh, no, she's watching. Uh, Hold on a sec. I want to show you. So, uh, I decided... Sorry. Hold this up. This year, I've got so many seeds. So, this year, I've gotten these tubs. 
Hey, Practical Ken, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. And I've been sitting here sorting to trying to decide on what I was going to grow <laughs> this year. So. Uh, Jerry, you just Sandy's a walking walking encyclopedia of garden knowledge. I mean, she's all around smart anyway, but her I garden know. knowledge is above and beyond. But I've got I've got a few seeds. <laughs> <laughs> and that probably ain't your whole stash, is it? No, that tub I just had on my lap, there's four of those. And then there's a couple of these boxes. And yes, <laughs> they're not gonna all stay viable, but I'm gonna give it a give it a go and um getting all these uh grown. I you know it's the whole thing where you like, oh, you know, if something were to happen. I want seeds. I, d I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be without seeds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, I was in, um, it was Lowe's and they had their seeds. Of course, I'll look at, you know, Family Dollar anywhere where they'll have seeds. I'll grab some and uh, just to, to have them. But, you know, I, I'm like you and you, you could always use them as a bartering of, of. Yes, you, know, you can two. barter them. Mm-hmm. Now, yes, bandana. Um, they always they they don't ever seem to be babies, and when you squish them, they're like bluish purple that comes out of them. I, I don't like squishing them. Oh yes, Mama Sassy says, and and there are more. She hides them on me. I do. We'll go to the store. I always have to pick up the. Uh, I'm an addict. <laughs> Let me just say it. I'm a seed addict. <laughs> I have a problem. Just a little well, problem. Well, once you get in that gardening mode, though, it's kind of hard to quit it because then you start wanting to learn more. And I know the first time I ever uh, had uh, planted um, collards and uh, cabbage. And I had collards. They could fill up the back of a truck. And I had cabbages the size of basketballs. I had men that had been gardening for years and farming. And they were just bragging on my garden. And after that, I wanted to do that again. But I never was able to replicate that garden, that, <laughs> that first one I did. Well, I can't wait to see what we do this year. We started um, last year. We had eight rows. Um, but that was just a little bit too close for everything because it was such a bumper crop. You couldn't uh -huh. walk down or really get in between the two in the rows. And even though I had them spaced right by the way of, you know, your rows that you're supposed to, um, it was just still too close. So we're going to knock out two rows this year and do more um, rotational uh, gardening over this year. So like once the corn goes in, I've got some um, called incredible corn that I'm going to try out this year. Uh -huh. And um, so that's, you know, once that's done, I'm going to chop and drop and put something else in. Um, and same way with the beans and stuff. Once they, you know, are starting to, to wear down, then I'm going to plant something else or do, you know, successional planting, which uh -huh. means, um, you know, plant a row, and then let that grow up about two, three weeks, and then come in behind it and plant more. Uh, so when the, the taller stuff is is all picked out, you just pull that out and you, you have the, or you just cut it out instead of pulling it? I just cut it out. Yeah. So not distor disturb the roots on the other ones that are growing up behind it. Uh, yeah so in uh, mama sassy brings up a point uh we have um uh, his home the home in melbourne florida it's in a subdivision so he has a row of bushes but he then he grows his um, vegetables behind that that row of bushes there uh-huh right and uh Right. 
the four for a dollar packets at Dollar Tree are really good. And I've got some of those. Yeah, I get those too. Bandana Grana. I, I, I like those because I'll get them because when seeds we got, well, they were kind of hard to find. I found some, so I kind of loaded up. Yep. <laughs> so as you can see, I don't know why I bought more carrots because I have the Danvers. The, no, these are Scarlet Nanettes. I do have some Danver half longs and then some radishes. So four for a dollar, 25 cents. You don't get a whole lot of seeds in them, but you get enough. I mean, I think this is about the same weight of where you where you're paying maybe just a little bit. Let me look here. So two grams and 500 milligrams. So for 25 cents, you get a fourth of what's in this packet for $2. So it's still wow. it's worth it. Oh, yeah. And it looks like there are going to be plenty of seeds this year. I think a lot of people bought up because everybody was kind of panicked as far as what was going to happen. And, uh, but from what I'm seeing, seeds seem to be pretty plentiful in the places I've been. Right. Uh, Jerry had a question. Uh, Friggle, have you uh, grown those dollar, uh, dollar shore seeds within good results? He was asking it you. Yeah, I have Jerry. I, I, I'll I'll buy them and plant them again. That's uh, I like them. And hey, Sandy, I also want to know how do you store oh. your your seeds? Oh, okay, I see it there. Um, well, mostly I seal them off in tubs, uh, but I do have some in the freezer and in the refrigerator. My fruit seeds are in the refrigerator. Do you find that extends the life of the fruit seeds? They do. Plus, it also stratificates them or stratifies them for um, some some seeds need stratification in order to uh, produce. So, um, I tend to keep the fruit tr fruit seeds in there. Uh -huh. What kind of fruit seeds do you have? Uh, cherry tree seeds, um, apple tree, loquats. I'm not down there. Oh, blackberries, blueberries. I've got those in the Georgia refrigerator. Uh, sounds like you. there may be an orchard in West Virginia. I don't have enough. I mean, I've got seven blueberry um, bushes out there that hopefully this year I planned those last year. And then I do plan on putting in uh, cherry trees up here. But my main goal is I really want to uh, start nursery and um, you know, just sell plants, uh -huh. ornamentals, herbs, and vegetables, seedlings. Jerry's got a question for you. Uh, Jerry, um, on the packet, it'll tell you if it needs stratification, um, cold stratification. So those are the seeds that I tend to put in the refrigerator. Not very scientific. Uh, how many of y'all are going to have a garden this year, at least try? I know it's kind of sometimes uh, land size plays an issue, but you can have nice little uh, uh, small container gardens. I was about to say pot gardens, but a lot of people have pot gardens too, but I don't. Um, but, uh, yeah, don't don't talk about those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's a book. Um, I'll give a book away. Hey, smoking! Thanks for stopping by. So, if you're looking for something different to grow, 
I have this book right here. I've actually got a couple copies of it. And I'll give it out to um, someone that might be interested in it. So how do you want to do that, Frugal? Uh, if they want to, uh, in my about section is my email. If you'll just get up with me, then I'll uh, get up with Sandy and uh, we'll make that happen. Right. But it, in here, I mean, I haven't, I've got three, I think three copies. I'm going to keep one. But um, it, it talks about different things that you can grow from ornamentals, vegetables, um, different types of things that you not that you wouldn't really hyacinth beans. Yeah, I got. I don't plant anything now unless it's something I could eat. Yeah, right. Well, you'd have to decide on if it's something that you like. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Bruce, but, how big a garden area do you have? And again, I apologize about the technical difficulties at the start of this, but I'm old and I'm blaming it on that. So, yeah. So, Frugal, are you going to be doing your um, your garden in these um, bales? Uh, yeah, I'm going to use my bales, and I've uh, I've got one area over there. The bales are kind of toward the back of my property. I want to put some hot peppers over there. I'm really interested in having some uh well quite a few peppers to be honest back there but then i can plant those back there and have my bell peppers over at my raised beds where i don't have to worry about uh, them cross pollinating right i've i thought about doing uh straw bale uh, gardening but um I think what I'm going to do is um, put in some like bandana, put in some dwarf fruit trees in the back and kind of make walking paths with um, raised garden beds with herbs and cut flowers this year. So uh -huh. I've got to get really working on that. But I also have to get the chicken coop finished so I can. It's going to be a movable chicken tractor type coop. Yeah, that's the only way to go with a chicken coop now. And yeah. I just like it, you know. They eat the grass, and, you know, that helps them out. Of course, you know, I feed mine everything. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, Bandana, um, we're, my sister and I were talking about putting up a privacy fence between this house here and the neighbor, because every time we walk out that way, the house is falling down. He doesn't have electricity. He's lived there for years. The floor is falling in he okay he visits there for years and uh so we're thinking about putting up a uh, privacy fence and then putting the fruit trees um a spillar i can't say that word but anyway put them up on the fence and uh, keep them pruned to where they they're not um, taking into the footpath of the footprint of the actual yard Uh, Sandy Bruce wants to know if you have plans for that chicken tractor. Um, no, I do not. Um, I'm actually kind of winging it. What I've done so far is what it's going to be is I have this four by six foot pallet that I'm putting on. Um, I'm going to build it up off the ground just a little bit with uh, landscaping timbers but underneath it which i have to go get the rock wool i've painted it but i've got to go get rock wool and i'm going to put it um, on the bottom of the chicken tractor and then put the um, quarter inch uh, hardware cloth over top of that to hold it up in there that keeps critters from digging up through the bottom of it and then um, i'm going to let me see. I've been drawing out my chicken tractor, <laughs> um, but it's but it's going to have um, a six by eight foot run on the front, and 
I do not have the cute here. No, nope. it's going to be six foot sides on the on the sides of it, with an eight foot pitch on the top, and um, and then it's going to be the 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 screen part out front. The run is going to be have a pitched roof also, and it's going to have a screen door on it. And then the whole side of the chicken tractor is going to open up on that same side. I'm going to have another door there to open up on top of the pallet. And um, that's how I'll, it'll be a couple different floors in there. But I made it wide so I can just scoop everything out and right into my wheelbarrow. But I've got linoleum. I've got a piece of plywood that I'm going to put over top of the pallet. And I'm going to put a linoleum on top of that. Uh, that'll be great. That uh, chicken manure will come right out. Mm hmm And uh, so um, it's um, it's going to be movable. Might be a little bit heavy, but um, Bruce, I um, you want to get it taken care of. <laughs> um, know where you're going to put your chickens before you actually get them. Um, I knew what I was going to do with mine, but the weather did not cooperate with me because I wanted to have eggs um, in the spring. Uh, so I, we got the chickens in November and they're still not where they need to be. So uh, right now they're living in cages in the basement and I have to carry them outside to a temporary pen uh, that I've built uh, to, to let them out in free range a little bit. So I just had them out today. It's a lot I'm of gonna, work. <laughs> I'm going to make a uh, rabbit type tractor, but I'll have wire on the bottom where they can't dig out, but mm -hmm. where I kind of cut my feed cost on them and uh, where they're eating grass and stuff and not as much pellet food. Mm -hmm. it got there for a while. I couldn't hardly find rabbit food. I, I, I mean, I could find it eventually, but I'd have to ride a little bit to find it. Right. Well, I was at Royal King today. I don't know if anybody has a Royal King. It's kind of like Maynard's, uh, Menard's and um, uh, tractor supply. It's it's mainly like a tractor supply and a, what is it, the Harbor Freight on yeah. steroids. It's, it's a combination of the two. And I love Royal King. Uh, but uh, they have um, went in there today to get pine shavings for the chicken coops and the guy's like not very helpful at all we don't have any and you know they want to you know give me cedar and i can't use cedar with chickens so um i uh was disappointed and had to go to tractor supply got up front and somebody brought this lady three bales of pine shavings I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Let me have, you know, I need some of those. Where'd you get them? Um, they were, they had them in the back, but the guy's like, no, we don't have anything in the back like that. So uh, I mean, that aggravates me when you get some somebody like useless. that. Yeah, just don't care. Uh, mm -hmm. so. But uh, well, I, it's getting to be about uh, twelve after eight, and I appreciate you manning the fort while I was not knowing what I was doing. And, well, uh, I, well, I hope everybody, you know, main thing is to take away from this evening is grow like what you want to eat and don't make it too big uh, that you're not going to attend it. Um, I have a habit of myself um, to saying, oh, I want to do all this and then not having the time to take care of it. So. Yeah, I got that same same habit. I know exactly what you mean because I'll have so many projects going on and get out like the other morning. It was kind of early and there was this tree that was aggravating me. So I said, you know what? I grabbed the chainsaw, cut it down. And it didn't take me but about 30 minutes to cut it down and get it moved to the burn pile. But it was just, you know, get it done like that. And it's always mm -hmm. something to do. Yes. So. 
hopefully um jerry thanks for thanks for coming in and and listening everybody i, I appreciate everybody coming in um oh bruce you brought um lumber and some building supplies looking for ideas what works in west virginia um i have to look up the um what's a city close to you i forgot the the county i know exactly what you mean bandana grano it's it gets hard when that it starts cooking mm -hmm. and i don't know how i used to get out there in those tobacco fields and stuff when i was young but i was young part of the uh, uh why i could i guess yeah <clears throat> i'm looking for ways to you know i'm not getting any younger and um looking for ways to make gardening easier for my father uh, so he can continue to enjoy it and not get worn out. Oh, okay. I stop in Beckley all the time, um, coming through there, the Walmart there, and Outback. Outback in Beckley is my place to stop at when I'm coming in. It's my last chance to get a decent steak before I get to um, Nitro. <laughs> <laughs> You need you a good grill up there. I do have a good grill. I, I had um, I had a grill uh, um, uh, gifted to me, which, uh, but I don't have anybody up here to grill it. Mary Carol keeps saying she's going to grill, but uh, Mama Sassy. But uh, we, we she's grilled once, and it was snowing all around it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, folks. Yeah. We're going to shut it down. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by. I'm going to be doing another live stream next week, and I'm just going to keep doing them. I'm going to have different subjects going on because I think times are going to get a little bit rougher than what we've ever experienced it. And I'm willing to share my knowledge and get people up here and know more than me, like Sandy, and get them to tell us their knowledge. And hopefully with all that, you know, life will be a little bit, easier for us so and yeah. thanks again and sandy hey thank you thank you so much i appreciate it oh thank you thank you for having me y'all have a good evening love you um, all <laughs> love y'all night all right night